Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined by Phil Mikens of anti-aging systems and a bunch of other amazing companies. Phil, what is up, man? How are you? Uh, it's great to be with you, Jay. What a what a fab channel you've got. And uh, I'm so pleased to be here today chatting about things, which I hope folks are going to find very interesting. It's an honor for me to have you, Phil. Uh, as I told you, you and I actually spoke at A4M back when I was not this online gypsy that I am now back in 2016. So this is going to be an amazing show. So you guys, let me just give you guys uh, Phil's bio real quick. Um, he has a background in food and vitamin technology, pharmacy and biochemistry, and he has researched many international health and medical developments for 35 years. Uh, I have been purchasing from his company, which is you know anti-aging systems. They have a bunch of other names and brands and online URLs and domains, but uh it's amazing how this all worked out because we're going to be talking about bioregulators today. And let me tell all of you guys, and you guys know that I am not one to hyperbolize. Bioregulators are literally the future of quantum healing. When you combine them with peptides and people can understand how to synergistically use them between oral and injectable. And as Phil was telling me off air, a lot of them are just as effective orally as they are injectably. Uh, you can really change and make a massive dent in allopathic sick care medicine. So, Phil, let me just ask you, you know, because we were talking about consciousness off the air, and you even said to me that what's happening now is that consciousness is expanding so fast now across the globe, especially after the, pans the pandemic, the scamdemic, whatever you want to call it, of the last three years, yeah. that it's the perfect storm to start talking about these type of fundamentally regenerative let's just call them, you know, supplements slash medications in comparison to, you know, the petroleum distillate big pharma medications that the world has been, you know, let's just call it subjugated to for the last 100 years. But just your kind of your thoughts and comments on that. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people through the recent scaredemic, as you correctly called it, um, uh, realized there's something wrong in the kingdom of Denmark. And, and I think a lot of people who weren't questioning things from their governments and the mainstream media are now questioning it, and rightly so. And, and if once you start questioning one or two areas that you had complete faith in, you start to question a lot of other areas. And one big area, of course, is health and medicine. Right. You know, and what the last 35 years that I've been researching international things has taught me is there are literally thousands of different protocols, products that are in use in other countries around the world that aren't known about in other countries around the world. There's all kinds of dogma, vested interests. There's all kinds of reasons why we don't get to hear about those things in our countries. Um, but the fact is, uh, and, we, and anyone that wants to go back and read the history of allopathic medicine, the, the book that I read was, was written by one of my heroes, a man called Edward G. Griffin. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure you know the guy. Creature from Jekyll Island. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Bro. Really, that, well, that's another another area, <laughs> another rabbit hole. Uh, but the, the book, that I, the first book I ever read of his was, was a book called um, uh, uh, The World Without Cancer. And the first half of the book is about a substance called Laetrile, and pe people will want to get into that and go and look it up. But the second half of the book was how the pharmaceutical industry, the allopathic medicine that we know today – was basically started more or less at the end of the Second World War or just before it perhaps even with people like John D. Rockefeller and so yep. on. And they created a cartel that, you know, literally the, 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 the way the license system, you get trained in the use of their products. You can only use their products. And of course, at that time, they drove out what was the predominant medicine of the time, talking 1920s, 1930s here, which was homeopathy. 
Yep. And now that's seen as quack medicine and allopathic medicine is the they would say is the be all and end all. But people who are conscious are realizing that natural medicine, if you want to, there's lots of different words, complementary medicine or whatever you want to call it, has a shed load of science behind it. That's right. But but the 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 how shall we call them? The orthodox doctors in the temples, i.e. the hospitals. A lot of them are not aware of it or not using it. And, of course, they're so busy, just the old expression, you know, the face is close to the grindstone. But <laughs> the conscious people are waking up to realizing that there's a whole world of choice out there. Yes. Well, so I can't beautifully well stated. I, I kind of look at it right now, Phil, is that we're, we've – it's already bifurcated. Yeah. You, ha- you have the people that are what I call divine, empowered, sovereign, and free – Mm-hmm. And they are not connected to insurance, subrogated health or medicine or healing, you know, and then there's, you know, quantum, he- let's just call us, we, we, we're into quantum healing. Mm-hmm. And then you have the other people that are like, they don't want to take ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, they want everything to be subsidized by the government, by the external savior, whatever the external savior is, whether it's their politician, their priest, their doctor, my doctor says. Yeah, you know, no, so like, yeah that's where we are now. They think they have an easy life. I was very lucky because my father, uh, my, he's now deceased, but my father taught me something from a very young age. And he actually said to me one day, and I'm sure you've heard this expression before, if somebody comes up to your son and says, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, run. <laughs> <laughs> because you know they're lying. But you're right, Phil. So many people literally live their life thinking that the man is their friend and their ally and that yeah. the man is literally there and designed to help them. Yeah, yeah. It's mind blowing. They're, they're excusing themselves to be right. part of your life. They are the leech on you. That's exactly so, right. So you, That's if exactly you think, right. you know, and you look after yourself and those are, and your loved ones around you, then you can truly be independent. And why are they forcing? You know, why were we forced to take vaccinations? I'm I'm pro-choice. I'm I'm a libertarian. Of heart. course. You know, if it doesn't harm somebody else, what's the problem? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, exactly. As soon as you don't have a choice, then you have to go Machiavellian, right? Because if there's not a choice, then the only thing that you can assume, and we know what happens when you assume anything, <laughs> is it's not good. All right. Enough of that. Let's get into what we want to talk about here today, uh, which is really all relevant. And that's obviously bioregulators. Now, I want to, I mean, you're the guy to talk about this, but like, I want to just kind of, you know, give my audience and of course you, my impression, as I told you off the show, as I've done my own research, as I've listened to my business partner, Nick Andrews, uh, you know, obviously I listened to your recent podcast with Ben, which was amazing. Ben Greenfield, good friend of the show. Shout outs to you, Ben. Um, this is a game changer, Phil. I mean, let's be real honest here. I mean, we are now looking at, uh, call them golden age, new earth, molecules, medications, supplements, whatever we want to call these things that literally can end uh, any reliance on the pharma industry or slash allopathic, you know, which I like to call sick care illness medicine. Because again, these are fundamentally regenerative uh, you know, addressing agents and very few people ever in the allopathic sick care space have ever even understood that. And so now we have these, you know, at our disposal again. And again, as you know, you have to be educated. You have to understand more is not always better. The difference between a pill and a poison is always the dosage, yeah. right? But it's like, if people now understood this and this whole show is going to be about this. And as I told you, you know, my, my team and, and, and copywriters are going to write a very deep dive expose on bioregulators, but tell people that I'm not exaggerating about mm. these things. Mm. Yeah. Uh, pleasure, Jay. I mean, basically um, w- what we're talking about, of course, you know, it's not as if some pharmacologist has just created a drug that never right. existed before he made he or she made it. Right. What we're talking about is the discovery of something in nature, okay? So we're talking about natural molecules. It's just that there's been a realization and awakening through science that these molecules, and we'll get into what they are and where they come from, um, do something, and they do something fundamental. Now, I know it's not a politically nice word, but it's a fact. This is Russian research. Right. Uh, and now, to go back, to give it its proper name because the discovery was actually made in the 1980s so it was soviet research okay and 
during that time, um, when they, uh, it's quite an amazing story, actually. I don't, I don't know if you want me to do a minute on the story. No, here, for Jeff. sure. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Thanks. So the, the lead guy behind all this is a guy called Professor Vladimir Kavinson, and yep. he's still going really strong today as well, I'm very pleased to say. And he heads one of the most prestigious institutes in Russia, which is called the uh, Institute of Biogerontology, which is based in um, St. Petersburg, one of the most beautiful cities I've ever visited in my life. And um, so in the 1980s, he got a call from the Kremlin, and it basically went along the lines of, We've got some of our elite troops, people in submarines, people in missile silos, uh, who are, and also cosmonauts, who are uh, not doing well. Um, th th they're aging fast. They literally said that. And if you think about it, if you're sitting in a submarine on the floor bed for six months next to a nuclear reactor, I don't suppose any of us would do very well. Okay. So, and also, and these are facts, so I'm going to mention them. I'm not, not trying to piss anybody off here. <laughs> oh, don't worry, dude. You'll piss somebody off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all our countries are guilty of it, uh, wherever you're from. Um, they also said that the Americans had developed at that time a, a, a laser that, would, if it was shone across the battlefield, would blind anybody that saw it. So they said, find an answer. Fix it. Be prepared, I suppose. So he went down a number of different avenues, but he had enormous research. He actually said to me once, Phil, I couldn't have done this in modern Russia. There simply isn't. It? But in those days, Soviet Union, you had the Kremlin wanting it. I picked the phone up. It was here tomorrow, whatever it was I, I needed. So, and they actually, because the Institute, there's a very famous man from the Institute, I bet everybody here has heard of, uh, his name's Pavlov. Yep, and, and Pavlov's dogs, right? You've all we all know the story about how he rang the bell and the <laughs> gave him the food and all that, right? Well, he came from the same institute, but he also happens to be uh, Pavlov was also happens to be the man who discovered short chain peptides. Okay, so going way back, so the original and short chain peptides are peptides made up of amino acids, not more than four. So, in other words. To be a peptide or dipeptide, you have to have two amino acids and then three or four. So what we're talking about today are short chain peptides not made up of two, three or four amino acids. Right. So with that in mind, Kavinson and his team started looking into that. You see, they already had that background to fall back on. And through all the research that was, you know, done all properly, it was all done in vitro, then they did animal studies. And then they did human studies, et cetera. They discovered that these short chain peptides that are in food, okay, act as gene switches. They either activate or silence genes. Now, and they're highly specific, highly specific. Yes. So this, this explains to me epigenetics. Yes. Okay. And I've got to tell you a little story here. I did warn you, Jay. I do tell a little story. No, it's awesome. Keep going. <laughs> so the less I talk, the better. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> um, so in 1981, I did my first degree. It was in food and vitamin technology in London. And in 1981, right? No PowerPoints, nothing of that business. <laughs> there was no cell internet, phones, bro. You, know? you didn't even have green screens then. It's, it's, no. it's overhead projectors we had, right? <laughs> and and I remember the lecturer that day, he put this big pie chart up on the wall, right? And, and he said, this is what you typically find in food, okay? So he said it was sort of X percentage of vitamins, X percentage of minerals, X percentage of uh, fats, but most of it was fiber, like it was like 55%, if memory serves me right. And I had a thought that day in the classroom, and it was this. And that my thought was, oh, fiber must be very important because there's an awful lot of it. And I believed even then, nature wastes nothing. We don't right. waste anything. You know, we don't right. waste light. We don't waste heat. We don't waste magnetism. We, everything. It's all energy. So I thought to myself that day, well, maybe fibers, and don't forget, 1981, people weren't too big on fiber then, right? Right. So, and I thought, well, either fiber is a lot more important than we think because there's so much of it in food, or maybe they've missed something. Maybe mm -hmm. there's something else in food. So, fast forward uh, for me to about um, 2010, when I first heard Professor 
Kavinson lecture. I happened to have gone to a meeting in Istanbul and I heard him lecture about what was a former Soviet military secret. Remember that the first yep. 20 years and they were doing all these studies and they were dosing it with their troops and their cosmonauts and their Olympic teams and other people like that. Um, so they had masses of data, masses and masses of data. And after he'd given this lecture where he'd basically shown that these short chain peptides are gene switches, that they're fundamental and we can get into that, I came up to the coffee break and I remember I didn't leave my seat. I was so spellbound. By well, away. But it, do you know what? It took me back to that classroom in 1981 because at that moment I realized that these peptides that are in food are one of the missing things that we didn't know about. They are instructions with literally, we are what we eat, right? That's right. Here are the instructions within the food to do that. Right. That, that's fundamental. Amazing stuff, man. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you said a lot. It's hard for me to unpack all that. Uh, no, but I mean, like, look, man, I, I I told you this. I mean, I can literally become the Jay Campbell front man, pitch man that I am for a lot of different products. And pretty soon I'm going to be that guy for you guys now. But like, I mean, look, man, like, like I said, the way I look at these things, it's so let's just let's cut to the chase from a solution standpoint. Phil, it, it's our job now. And I know you've been already been banging this drum for decades. But it's my job and your job now to get as many people educated on why they should be buying these and using these. I mean, look, I'll just give a very simple story. And I know we got to go even way deeper because we have five talking points. But I'll just give the, the, the story on the prostate. Now, as you know, right, because you're even older than I am right now, <laughs> like, we all as aging men develop some form or fashion of BPH, benign prostate mm -hmm. hypertrophy. It is an inevitable part of an aging man. You know, the statistics show that if you're 80 years old, if you live to 80, you probably have a mild form of prostate cancer. That's mm -hmm. literally the statistics, right? right? So the reality is, is like here is now, and, and, and let me, let me just talk about sick care and allopathic medicines cures, right? Mm -hmm. Green light, ultrasound, what you know, laser surgical resection. If you have like a cancerous tumor or you know, the, uh, an early onset PCA, they do a radical prostatectomy. I mean, I don't need to go any deeper, right? They don't even tell men that the chances of sexual dysfunction are better than 50%. I mean, it's a scam. So right. now there is literally a prostate bioregulator or bioregulators. That yeah. people can take that, as you said, are tissue specific yeah. that will literally work as you age to reduce the size and the symptomology, which, as you know, dude, is literally as a man waking up in the middle of the night to take a piss. Yes. Which right. shuts it's down our sleep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. It's, yeah. I mean, what's worse than, you know, disrupting polyphasic restorative sleep than a man having to wake up and take a piss. But that's almost yeah. all of us. Yeah. Right. So it's like you see this, you extrapolate that and you're like, are you serious? I mean, Phil, my, you know, and I want your take on this, but my thoughts on this is and the reason that we have to educate people so much is that they're not going to believe it. Yeah, I, I know. You're absolutely <laughs> right. It is. It, you're absolutely right. Just quickly on the prostrate there, Jay, is, is, um, are you absolutely right? I've, I've met no end of people who their doctors did not fully inform them of what it meant to remove their prostate. Dude, and then they're sexually right. dysfunctional, having to get penile implants to exactly. even get an erection. So exactly, not telling a man he'll never have another erection. But by I the mean, way, that's that's right. a criminal offense, Phil. Yeah, you're right. It's one of many that are unfortunately... Uh, <laughs> get in line. There's hundreds of them. It's legalized. It's legalized criminality. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, Unbelievable. Um, no, absolutely. So you're right. There is a... By the way, as a side note, I'm sorry it's not a peptide, but if somebody has prostate cancer, I would recommend they look into a supplement called 4MU. And the great Jonathan Wright, one of the, you know, Dr. Jonathan Wright from the Tahoma Clinic in Washington, quite famous, I think, in the States. Um, you know, he wrote us an article about it. So if you want to get into that, so I'm it's just four MEO. I just wrote it down. Four MEO. Four MEO. That, that's just a different subject. See, maybe people say four MEO and they're going to say, Jay, I heard five MEO. Are we going to go <laughs> on a toad trip? <laughs> uh, but you're right. There is a, uh, there is a prostrate 
peptide bioregulator. Now, I should explain something that Please do. is one of the mind blowing aspects of these things. Okay, why do they use the word bioregulator? Right, because there's a thousand yes. peptides out there, right? Yes. So, okay, these are short peptides, short chain peptides. But why are these? And there may be others that act as bioregulators, but we don't know. Okay. Today, there are 21 that are commercially available. However, in the Russian research, about 50 seem to exist, okay, from the research, published research anyway. But what makes them different? What, how do these stand apart from other? Why do they use the word bioregulator, okay? Well, we know that they activate or silence genes, okay, right. very specific. How do they do that? One, they're nano-sized. Two, they act directly on DNA. And three, they pass through the stomach into blood. They yeah. do not get degraded in the stomach, okay? So how they is that, by the way? Scientifically, how is that possible? Because that's the question that the geeks are going to ask. Like, how is that happening? Yeah, well, I think partly because of their size, because they are nano, and partly because they are very short chains. They don't get, you know, you try and pass through a, I don't know, a 15, 20, 25, I mean, you remember the early days when yeah, people yeah, 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 yeah. Were hormone, yep. and 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 they were saying and they were saying you could swallow it. No, you never get 191 amino acid into your chain of amino acid. In, yes. Not not that not by that route. Right. So um, so I think those two things, and there are there is a study that is in English now because that's been part of the problem, right? It's Everything always been Russian, but there is now a large body of it that has been translated into it. I'm not saying all of it, but there's a large body of it. If you speak Russian, great, you've got no problems. But if you don't, then you have to read. But there's a large body of it now in English. So they bioregulate. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's more simple to look at an organ, uh, more easy. So, for example, my favorite one I like to use is the thyroid gland. OK, now a lot of people are quite familiar with the thyroid, what it does, etc. A lot of people are hypothyroid. They, they're not generating enough thyroid. That's a big problem today. Maybe half the adults are hypothyroid to some degree or another. And conversely, there's a small number of people who are hyperthyroid. They produce right. and they're very different people. And by they're the way, just so you know, side side note. Night and, and again, I'm preaching to the choir, but 90 percent of doctors don't even know how to separate hypo and hyper. No, I, okay. My, no, no. I suppose you. I suppose you're right there. Well, uh, and we're talking about medical crimes. The way that the standard treatment of thyroid is undertaken is another thing we could go down. Oh my god, that's a rabbit hole, dude. It, it's another awful thing that goes on. But but the, what I, what I want to say is, so let's say you are a person who's hypothyroid. You have a weak thyroid gland. If you use the thyroid peptide bioregulator, you are going to activate those genes and you're going to invigorate your thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormones. Yes. Exactly. But get this, if you're hyperthyroid and you take the peptide bioregulator thyroid, you're going to silence it and the thyroid gland is going to produce less. It actually has a mechanism to keep you within a band. Unreal. Now, this is bad news for bodybuilders <laughs> because if you want super logical levels of testosterone, you're not going right. to get it with the exactly. testing. Right? Okay. Yeah. That's just to give you an example. But if you're an older guy or an older girl who wants to kind of help normalize, get yourself yeah. to a youthful level. Yeah. 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 That's where it's going to go. Now you have to have the gland. Yeah. Right. If you've had a gland removed or you're a lady. What is that called when they have the surgery? Parathyroidism or whatever, where they remove oh, the thyroid gland? Yeah, there's um, a thyroidectomy. Yeah, thyroidectomy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be that one. Yeah. So, so that isn't going to work for you, okay? You have to, but there's not, thankfully, there's not too many people in that boat, right? Right, right, so right. That's right. One, one piece of good news. So imagine that. And this helps to explain, and again, I'm sorry if we're going to be blowing a few minds here today. No, that's fine. That's It's the most important thing. But can you imagine that in Russia, and when I say Russia, I'm talking Russian-speaking countries here. Right. I'm talking Ukraine. I'm talking Kazakhstan. The former Soviet bloc. Exactly. Exactly. So, that you know, it's been wide use. Now, Professor Kavinson told me personally, fairly recently, actually, they think that they've dosed over 100 million times. Wow. And, yeah. And, and they're talking about... Uh, 
tens of millions of people, right? So it, it's remarkable. And wait for it. Hope everyone's sitting down. <laughs> to date, no serious side effects. I was just going to say that because, again, they're tissue specific, they're biologic, they're organic for the most part. I know there's some synthetic ones too, but it's like, I mean, when you hear that, again, Phil, most people don't believe it because they're so brainwashed and trained, indoctrinated, ingrained in biopharma from big pharma, petroleum distillate products that you can't tell me that. No, exactly. No, we, 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 we think there's one way. And of course, fundamentally, we're, we're not affecting the symptoms. We're getting to the core. We're getting to the, you know, right to the core. You're going to make those glands work more efficiently. You're going to make those tissues work more efficiently, etc. So I know the big question is, which ones do you use and where do you start and all that? Maybe you want to do that some other time. But People have to get their head. Now, I can tell you, we've made um, two books. We've written quite a few articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have you guys' books too. I have I have Cavinson's Protocol book, and uh, and right. I've got the little pamphlet books that you guys used to give away at uh, A4M. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. By the yeah. way, that one of them is amazing. It's only got like 80 pages, but it's loaded with information. Yeah, you is got it, it right one? in front of you. Yeah, exactly. The peptide bioregulator yeah. revolution. Yeah. Is it that one? We yeah. use one of those old Russian revolution. Yeah, I mean, I, me I remember picking that up. It was free at you know, one of the tables like three or four years ago. And I was like, "This, what the fuck is this? And then I started reading. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sit down and actually pay attention to this. No, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's somewhere in my books over here. But uh, well, um, so, but I do look, I, I, I want to go, we, we can do a series of podcasts, but I, I want to go you know, as deep as your, you know, energy will allow you. Cause I know it's Friday. I know it's Friday night across the That's pond. Okay. Right now. I'm a bit of a night bird, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we're going to do that. But so I, I would just say, and then um, going back to the Russians and how they discovered these, I think we should give a little bit more of a history. I mean, some people are going to say, Phil, well, this seems like alien technology, like, <laughs> you know, tissue specific, passing the microbiome, uh, no methyl toxicity in the liver. Like, how is this possible? And again, obviously people are brainwashed because they only understand petroleum distillate, uh, you know, metab meta metabolics and pharmacodynamics, but okay. maybe explain like how they found them. Like how, what, who was the originator of like finding this and, and, and understanding this? Well, yeah. I mean, first of all, let, we don't think of food like that, do we? Do we, a majority of food isn't toxic, isn't this, right. isn't that? You well, know, in the USA, dude, the food is toxic. Oh, right? well, yeah. Let's, let's talk organic. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's not really food anymore, is it? it it's, it's, it's not. Uh, GM is somebody GM. else's patented creation. So, uh, oh, let's you, know, you know what blows my mind is listening to the people, the spin doctors out there saying GMO is the greatest boon in the history of the world because now we can feed hundreds of millions instead of only millions. Oh, okay. well, what about their microbiome? No, it, it, it's concerning. I think every time we move away from nature, we miss something. Right. And, and now, of course, I'm, it concerns me, and I'm not going to mention names, but it concerns me that certain people are now the biggest landowners in the United States. Of course, States. yeah. And um, and wanting us to eat manufactured meat, manufactured. Dude, it's why unreal. Do, it's why unreal. do they assume that we're getting everything from this manufactured meat that we it, need? It's unreal. One one of my good friends and mentors when I was growing up said, "You probably have heard this in one form or another." But he used to say, "If God didn't make it, you shouldn't need it." Yeah, very true. I I can't think of the gentleman's name at the moment. He's a well, well known Indian guru, and I once heard him say um, about food. Uh, if it's got a label on it, it's probably poison. Exactly. So, right. you know, uh, anyway, that but takes they us. always tell us, right? Because all you have to do is turn over and look at the ingredients and you, you, half of the words aren't even words. <laughs> They're like legal <laughs> yeah, that they invented the patent. 
I know, I know. And then you know, you know the devil's in the detail, Jay. You know the devil's in the detail. As soon as you start missing a, a lot of the studies, for example, on vitamins that don't work very well tend to be the synthetic ones. Yeah, of course. And not the natural ones. Of so, course. Yeah. If you look at the ingredients, you see all these like ham harmful particulates and byproducts that aren't designed to be metabolized by the human gut. Mm, quite. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. So that's that's a point to make. So these peptides, uh, now as you say, they can be made synthetically. That, yes. that does go on. Um, and there are some big names in that department that folks out there might know, like probably the most famous one is Epitalon, yep. um, I would suggest. Um, but the natural ones, at the moment, they're predominantly bovine extracted. Okay? Right. We're talking about carbs here. So that's that. And by the way, folks, don't get worried about getting mad cow disease or something like that. <laughs> prions, prions prions because these things are nano they're tiny they're way smaller than daltons which where prions come from but dude that's, that's also that's also the entrainment from upton sinclair yeah you know, yeah first it was the Rockefellers, and then it was sinclair <laughs> yeah yeah there's been a lot over the years and i'm sure we're going to see a lot more as well oh uh, dear, but yeah, the, we're only uh, in any, I think we're in the first inning, bro, and there's no out or second inning and there's no outs. I mean, they got lots more up their sleeves. Mm. Oh, it, it's a game. They've got <laughs> very, they've got much bigger computers than we've got to play <laughs> these games out for them, right? And then they know what to do beforehand, sort of thing. Anyway, but uh, I think we, I think you and I are on the same page as well. Yes, we are. Um, but th that's what I, it was mind blowing for me when I first learned it in, in 2010. And, and I think I said to you off air, it took me over a year to say, wow. yeah, I believe this. I mean, I know that us in the West also carry that baggage of the Russians are the enemy because we were taught that for some Of course, time. brainwashed. Life. But you know what? When I went over there for the first time to, to Russia, which I think was about 2012, somewhere around there, I, I went with – I'll be honest. I, I, I consider myself a quite well-traveled person. Sure. But I went to Russia with a certain amount of trepidation. Yeah, of course, because you, you had to think, oh, the so former Soviet Union. Exactly. But you I'm know going what? behind the wall, the KGB. I, oh, you, all of that, all of that. And I met, I, and it was in St. Petersburg, and, and it's Professor Cams who showed me around the Institute and met lots and lots of, you know, well-known people in, in that part of the world. And, um, and no, not the top man. No, I never met him. And uh, But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but He's anyway, got so many clones. How would you have known exactly, anyway? <laughs> exactly, exactly. One of his doubles, maybe. I don't know. But um, but anyway, so and and I came away from that trip thinking these are bright, intelligent, warm, nice people. Yeah, absolutely. And and somebody very famous once said, I can't remember, and I think it's true of any country. And the, and the quote goes, um, "I'm proud of my country. I'm just ashamed of my government." Right. So you know. But we can take that with us. But the Russians, I've got to say this, they are not as entwined with, how should we say, commercial pressures as we have in the West. Right. Their science in the main, not always, but in the main, in my opinion, tends to speak more the truth as they see it. Sure, sure. So, And, of course, for Kavanson and his team, for many years, they couldn't talk about these peptide bioregulates because they were used by the – the military, by the cosmonauts, and by Olympic teams. And I've carried that around. I've also had people over the years say to me, very, very interesting field, but you can't trust the Russians, can we? And until somebody else from outside that region does trials, then we'll take some notes. Yeah, I know. Well, there's good news. Somebody outside. It's happening. It's happened. Uh, as, a, as a gentleman by the, excuse me, by the name of Dr. Bill Lawrence, and he's in Atlanta, in Georgia. Yep. And uh, he has, for more than three years now, has been conducting trials with a group of patients. The original group of patients were 39 people, okay? He's now got over 120 in, in the program. Um, now, Bill does a really deep dive. He's, he's a, how can I put him? He's a real high-end doc. Yep. You know what I mean? He, he, yep. he doesn't do things by halves. Yep. And, um but I can talk about, and, he's, and when we had an event here in England uh, last October, which we called the Profound Health Summit, we invited all these guys to come and tell us. And we hope to do this fairly regularly to keep the science up to date. 
And um, Bill presented the results of three years of giving these 39 patients peptide bioregulators. Yep. And there were a number of parameters that were evaluated, but guess what? The results were either mimicked as good as or even close to what the Russians were getting. Right. But there were two things that stood out that, to be honest, the Russians were never really looking for. Because you remember in the 80s and the 90s and even into the 2000s, there were certain tests that were not readily available. Okay? Right. And what right. I'm speaking about here is telomere length. Yep. Okay. And um, what's now known as the Horvath clock or That's right. DNA methylation. Epi, uh, epi age is one of the uh, biological age. Yeah, biological age is the big rage now. Exactly. So here's the thing, right? All the patients, and these, and we're talking about people here from the age of about 40 to about 70, okay, in, in the initial trial, everybody increased their telomere length, everybody improved their uh, DNA methylation, which according to Professor um, Horvath, I know I'm probably reading stuff from a couple of years old here. He didn't know of anything that could reverse. He thinks even that even one year difference can make a big difference. Massive, yeah. In your, in your mortality rate and all the rest of it. And I can tell you that the average, and this was over a three year, two to three year period, you get the big results, okay? The, in this particular measurement I'm talking about, the average that he reversed their. DNA age, if we want to call it that, or epi age, as it's sometimes called, was 4.69 years. Wow. Okay. And if anyone doesn't know out there, this particular solo test is probably the most accurate biological age measurement we have right now. Right. Okay. Because there are some biological age measurements that are a bit airy fairy, and you go, yeah. Am I really 30 years younger? Am I really 30 years old? Right. You know, they don't seem quite there. I understand that there are some police forces now around the world who are using the hall. So they go to a scene of a crime. They find some blood on the floor that they think might be from the perpetrator of the crime. What can they tell about it? Well, if they haven't got the guy's um, DNA on file, sure. they don't know who it is. What can they tell from it? Well, they can tell male or female, the blood group, obviously, and bits and pieces like that. But using the Horvath clock, they reckon – they can get the person's chronological age plus or minus four years. So now they know if they're looking for a 30-year-old, a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, et cetera. So wow. that shows you how – and we've never had anything like that before. So it shows you. So to make significant changes to it, and if you want to know who got the best reversal, it, one guy got a nine-year reversal, but the average was 4.69 years. Wow. How old were the people? They they varied. I think the youngest guy was 40-something. I don't think he was 45 at the start. And the oldest guy uh, was 70. In fact, um, of course, Dr. Lawrence himself is 73. Yeah. Um, and he's using it himself, of course. So, But that's, you know, the fact that everybody in the trial had a, a success. Now he's up to 120-something patients. And here's the rub that you might like. Nearly everyone in the trial is a medical doctor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's so weird, though, Phil, is like as mind-blowing as you and I can go. And, you know, you and I can geek out on peptides and, and bioregulators. You know, there's still so many physicians that have absolutely no idea about this yeah. stuff. No idea. I mean, like, you know, another example of this is like you're an orthopedic. You're an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. And obviously the not the knowledgeable ones now are very familiar with BPC and TB 500 and thymus and alpha and you know, all these different things that they can do, but it's like, it's actually, and I know you know this, but it's actually a crisis of consciousness now mm -hmm. with a physician who is familiar with peptides when a 50 to 55 or older patient mm -hmm. comes in with an ACL or a PCL or an MCL or even an Achilles destruction. Mm -hmm of whether or not they do the surgery, which as you know, is a $60,000 billable procedure according yeah. to the you know, insurance diagnostics versus giving them $600 to $1,000 worth of peptides. Yeah, absolutely. Calling it a day. I know. It's frightening. But I, unfortunately, <laughs> having been in certain scenarios, they sometimes they know, sometimes they want to do it, 
but they're scared. Why are they're they scared? scared? Right. Oh, because they're 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 the medical license. licensing boards will come in and say, you did what? Yeah. They won't cover me on my insurance if something goes wrong and they try to blame it on that, even though it might be nothing to do with it. Think about college athletes and professional athletes who can't even use peptides to heal. Do you know what, Jay? What kind of shit oh, is that, Phil? I, uh, I've, I've also heard this too many times. Uh, some chap who runs the hospital or whatever, and he'll say, um, he'll say uh, we only practice evidence-based medicine here. <laughs> I, that is a mantra, right? That is a mantra. And then I start, you know, politely and quietly and <laughs> drilling it down. And eventually, by the end of it, they have to admit, oh, what I meant by that was we only uh, we only supply approved drugs. Exactly. That's, that's, look, we only it, supply approved drugs. How can you say because just because vitamin C is not approved in the hospital doesn't make it useless. You know, there's so much research. Just, well. As an example, it's so mind blowing, Phil. I mean, I think about like how, well, I mean, this, just, you know, without getting anybody in trouble, I mean, my, my bonus daughter is a division two all American soccer player at Point Loma in San Diego. And she just tore her ACL or her PCL. She was one game away from going into the division two playoffs last year. It was a disaster for I mean, because she was the best player on the team. And I remember having conversations with the school's trainer before I went and talked to the orthopede. They don't have an effing clue, bro. Like, we've been using these things for two decades. As I tell people, I've been using Ipamorellin since 2004. Mm. I started using BPC and TB500 in 2008. Mm. I mean, this is like old shit to you and I. And these people oh, literally still don't even know they exist. And they're brainwashed to literally say, oh, those things are experimental. Of course. That's it's high risk. We don't have any peer review. I know. I mean, the what? Russians have only been the Russians have only been using it for forty years. They've only done it on ten million people, and you know, I mean, come on. They, they, we can talk about some of the trials they've done. I mean, pharmaceutical companies would give their right arms for some of the trials that they've done. They're massive, absolutely massive. I've, I've got a, a, a two quick stories here. Please, you, man. Yeah. Take um, all the time you want. Thank you very much. Uh, the first one is um, I've got to tell you. Uh, first of all. My, one of my heroes, Jonathan Wright. Yep. Dr. Jonathan Wright, I, I, brilliant man, absolutely brilliant. And, of course, he's into natural medicine, as I'm sure you know. Yep. Um, I once heard him on stage, and um, he said to the audience, he said, I, I'm going to ask you now a question. And he said, just shout out any answers. There's no, no harm. He said, when it comes to therapeutics, he said, forget about surgery. We're not talking about surgery. But he said, when it comes to therapeutics, I would like you to guess how far are we behind the literature? Now, you accept that we have to be behind the literature. That's what research is. It's always yeah. pushing the envelope and we're meant to follow on behind, right? So how far are we behind the literature? And some guy shouts out, you know, 10 years. Okay, he said, anybody else? And somebody else goes, 20 years. So he goes, okay, anybody else? And then somebody goes, okay, 25 years. All right, he said, I I'm going to tell you my opinion. And this is a man who who sends students down to universities to draw out the information that's in the books that isn't even online because most of the world's information is still not online. He said to them, I believe, he said, wait for it, we're 100 years behind the literature. Of course. Right? Of course. How confident would you be if you walk in and, and, and say, well, congratulations, we're now practicing 1923 medicine? Yep. So anyway, so that's his in therapeutics. OK, so that's one angle. But I've got to tell you about an Italian surgeon. OK, and I know his, his name is Valero de Nicola. OK, and Valero, I, I know the guy and he came and lectured at our conference uh, last year. What he's done is remarkable. And when you say to people, oh, by the way, this has all been published um, in various journals, uh, he worked with the University of Rome. That's pretty prestigious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, they did this over five years, and they followed up on 2,000 patients. So here we have a sizable cohort, a sizable period of time, a very respected university, and in all the gold standard PubMed journals, or two or three that he got into. What did they do? Well, they had... People had problems. They were told all these folks, again, older folks, you know, from sort of 50 to 70 something, 
they were told they needed either a new knee or a new hip. OK. Um, and as you probably know, if you're particularly old, sometimes they won't even undertake those operations. They'll say, oh, it's too dangerous for you. We're not going to do that, especially a hip, which is a very major operation. So Valero, with his team in the University of Rome, they had an idea, I suppose, and they said, how can we get the heat shock proteins within our own blood to invigorate the mesenchymal stem cells to make new cartilage? And they discovered a way, and so let me, let me, they discovered a way, and let me just tell you very quickly what it is. So if you had this procedure, you go along to the Rome Clinic, they would extract from you 10 milliliters of blood. Not very much, is it? 10 milliliters. To extract from you 10 milliliters. They then, um, for want of another word, torture that blood in a chamber. It's a very specific procedure of heating and cooling, right? And when it's finished, it's like ready the following morning, right? So you come back into the clinic the next day. It looks like a piece of chewing gum. You know that cinnamon chewing I've actually yeah, seen sure cinnamon sticky chewing gum but it's your blood right but now it's rich because the heat shock proteins are like a last defense for the blood and they they get released now there's a skill of the surgeon here so let's say it's your knee that's the problem the surgeon has to know where the deposits of the mesenchymal stem cells are on the knee right they're in particular places but with that knowledge they make three millimeter cuts so very very so you get more than falling off your bike right sure. so you so there's no, it doesn't penetrate the capsule it doesn't go anywhere near the bone right the three millimeter cuts they make those cuts they then put what was your blood back in they kind of stuff it back in they may make a stitch or two and job done some people come back a second time some people come back a third time in every case today They've had a complete regeneration of the cartilage. They, they, they have no pain within 10 days, and I can explain that if you want me to. And we're over three to four and sometimes five and six months, depends on the condition of the patient, depends on the, um, you know, uh, the age of the patient. So on. They have completely avoided the need for a knee or hip replacement. Now, why isn't that known everywhere? Right? It, I'll give you one reason. It's cheap. It's proven, right? Why doesn't everyone know about that? Because joints, yeah, you know, if there's anything in this world, I think there are two things in this world. I'm not talking about cancer. But there's two things in this world. That as we age, if your joints are playing up, every time you move, you know. Ow, <laughs> ow, ow. Gets your attention, right? And the yep. other one is losing your eyesight, isn't it? It yep. gets your attention. So people act normally quickly on those things. And here's a, this remarkable thing, and he's having a hell of a job getting it off the ground. There you go. <laughs> Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I love how you wind it out and then come back to right where it needs to be. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So look, I, I'm not going to keep you forever. We will do multiple podcasts. I know you're interviewing with Tom on Monday. Um, let's get into the nitty gritty because people are going to want to ask. And I know this is very cursory and superfluous, but let's get into the nitty gritty. How do they actually work? Well, because of their nano size, they actually interact directly with DNA. Yeah. And it's it's like a key going into a lock. And that's right. why they're very specific. So either activate or silence. And it's because of that that they induce protein synthesis right. in whatever tissue organ we're talking about. Okay. Yep. And that helps to explain something, right? Because, you know, over the years, if you wanted to put bulk on, you know, and do it naturally, you know, you would have eaten a steak or a salmon or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. High protein. But you, everybody knows that proteins get destroyed in the stomach. So how, I mean, for many years, people thought if we eat protein, 
we get the protein in us. But no, we don't because the protein gets broken down. That's pretty well known. But what happens, of course, is some of those proteins, as they get broken down, get broken down into some of these short chain peptides. And these short chain peptides induce protein synthesis. That's that's what the Russians have shown. The first guys who got this in a big way were their cosmonauts. So the guys that went up into space for long periods, like a year or more, I know they exercise in space now, and that certainly helps them. But after long periods of time, they still come back with significant muscle wastage. They're still a lot weaker than than their compatriots that they left behind, you know, last year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they put them on the peptides when they get back to Earth, and they recover much, much more quickly. And they've been doing that with the Olympic teams as well. So it, it really helps to... To, to build up. So that's the process of operation. It's a direct, extremely direct method of action. And of course, by activating or silencing a gene, there's a downstream events with hormones and other issues, of course, it would have to get into specific ones. Um, I do believe of the 21 that are currently available, my personal opinion is is the pineal peptide. Maybe. Not pineal, Ron. I was going to ask you about that. I was going to save that for the end of the show. But before you get to that, because, um, again, you know, the people are going to ask the basic questions. Jay, how fast do these work? And yeah. what about, do I need to take them on an empty stomach to cross the uh-huh. brain barrier? What about, can I can, can I take them with food? Is there like a specific time of day to not take them? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Are they going to keep me awake? You know, all the normal questions. Sure, sure. Yeah, happy to. Do you want me to answer a couple of those Absolutely. now? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Well, um, I would suggest they're slightly better taken with food. There is some fat solubility involved here, so that right. would be better. And if you were taking a lot of them, we've got people that do take a lot of them. Um, not really want an empty stomach. You don't want some kind of reaction. So, well, so, so are there cross-chain contamination reactions or anything like that if you're taking like one? I mean, because that was what I was going to ask you is like, you know, because in the peptide stacking world, we always say, what is your primary goal? Yeah, right? yeah, because people in their mind are going to want to heal and they want to lose fat and they want to build muscle and they want to stimulate the brain. It's like, wait, yeah. right, figure yeah. out what's most important. Let's focus on fixing that, yeah. creating that modality, and then we'll move on to the next. But with peptide bioregulators, you know, if they ask that question, you know, like my prostate screwed up, my kidneys are screwed up. I mean, can you technically fill because again, the tissue specificity take yeah. a bunch of them at one time? I mean, what's yeah. the best practice? You, you can. You can take a bunch of them. Unbelievable. The, the only thing is you may not need some of them, and therefore right. you're wasting your money, right? That's so right. That's, that's one right. thing. There's a bunch of guys who who've suggested to me they wouldn't take more than five at a time, five different types, because of the method of signaling. I can't put my hand on my heart and say that's absolutely yeah, you don't true. Know. But you can cycle. The, but let me get to, a, I think, is a very significant point here. Please. You do not take these things every day. No, of course. And 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 so if you had, let's get back to our thyroid for our easy recognition. If you had a, a weak thyroid and the doc says, here's the thyroid, uh, you know, I want you to take, um, more or less, you want to take it every day because you are literally putting that thyroid into yourself. Right. Right. And it will either be lacking if you don't. So that's, but the thyroid pep, peptide bioregulator is going directly to the gene, uh, uh, re- kindly requesting the gene to go to the thyroid and produce more uh, thyroid um, hormones, of which, of course, there are more than two. Everyone yeah, focuses four. Exactly. Everyone focuses on T3 and T4. T1, T2, yeah. they're very important people. Yeah, exactly. And, well, and that's allopathic. Allopathic, like you said, oh, I mean, yeah. you know, if you're familiar with the book, Stop the Thyroid Madness. Oh, yeah. I mean, they literally destroy women's thyroid by giving them T3 in massive levels. And then before you know it, dude, they're literally completely have dysfunctional thyroid. Yeah. No. And now they're dependent on that horrible medication their entire life. And when women come off of it, I've seen women gain 100 pounds. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's massive. It's massive. So, but so you're doing something more fundamental. You, you're actually, you know, getting this to go on in a more natural state. Exactly. There, there is a condition if you've got people who are using hormones and then they are supplementing with a particular pep. I have to advise some caution. In other words, monitor yourself because you're, you're almost certainly going to have to bring that dose of that hormone down. Yeah. Possibly to nothing. But yeah. nonetheless, you've got to watch it because you're, you're putting that extra in. Well, so let me ask you about that. And I know I'm rabbit holing on you, but it's, you know, obviously I have a very large contingent of men and women who are hormonally optimized. So 
cope for 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 them like because I saw the testy the testes bioregulator and then I've also seen the ovaries bioregulator like how 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 should those be used when someone is already hormonally optimized should they not be well okay it's a good that's a good point I, I suppose the question to ask is how are they hormonally optimized? right well so most of these people would be like you know elderly. You know, I shouldn't say elderly. I right? don't ever say oh, that, right? <laughs> We're just advanced biologically. That's right. That's right. But, but you know, forty-five eight. and up, forty-five and up, they're using probably like therapeutic testosterone or right. you know estrogen, progesterone, estradiol for women. Yeah. Um, and so they're you know they're all but they're already hormonally balanced from exogenous, right. but they still want the, you know the maximum edge. So yeah. how would they apply the bioregulators? Well, it, it, so they haven't actually got. A glandular problem, right? It, it's just aging, right? Exactly. The glands go totally. down. You know, we, so accept that as natural. But I mean, okay, fine. So these folks, um, the typical dose is two capsules, right? For what each day for ten days, right? Now, so it's similar to like a pitolan and thymolin stack. Exactly. Exactly. Now you do that for ten days. Now the only thing that I'm not talking. Of course, it would be more for people with serious problems. Yeah, might, absolutely. Might take but that's not really my audience. So, no, um, but audience. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're caveating that. Thank you. So basically, you've got two to capsules, ten days. So you've got twenty capsules, and that's the size of the pack, right? You get twenty capsules in a pack. Now, now hold on. I want to say something. And by the way, guys, and not expensive. <laughs> like these people have no idea, right? Like this is also new to them, but they're used to spending four or $500 on a 10 day peptide cycle. And I'm like, uh, when you guys find out that that's not that expensive, you're going to be probably shitting yourselves. But anyway, keep going. <laughs> I, I always get gobsmacked when I look up the price <laughs> in America. They're Gobs like, dude, this is like 50 bucks. Like, are I you know. serious? <laughs> I know. I know. No, that's right. So basically, so what? So it's basically, it's now how do you cycle it? Okay. Now, if folks are in pretty good health uh, and they kind of want to top up, I would say you do not need to cycle more often than every three months. Maybe. So, in other words, you're taking twenty capsules every three months. Maybe. Okay. Now, if you are particularly fit and healthy, but you are into this anti-aging. Yep. Longevity. Life thing. extension. Longer, Life longer extension. and shorter, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Then I think you can step it down to every six months. Every six, yeah. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I always so love now discretion. discretion is the better part of valor, Phil. Two packs a year, Jay. Unbelievable. And, that, and if you get it at the right price, we're talking 80 bucks. It's oh. unbelievable, dude. It's unbelievable. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is a game changer. I mean, like I said, Phil, our biggest barrier of entry is believability. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, people just will not even comp comprehend this. I mean, as you know, like, again, and, and, and again, I'll say advanced biologically. But, you know, people that are taking 20 color-coded big pharma pills, I mean, they know they live their life around affording the goddamn medications oh, and dreadful. surviving. It's dreadful. It's dreadful. It's literally course, insane. So when we start telling them about this, they're like, what? I know. And you know this. I'm sure you know this expression, Jay. Polypharmacy. <laughs> Once they've got you on five drugs, congratulations, you are now going to be adding another one, another one, Dude, another one, another one. Phil, so I'll, take it a deep, I'll take it a deeper step. There is an there is an entire global cottage industry mm -hmm. from the manufacturers of all of the paraphernalia that store, classify, and catalog all of those different colored pills so that people don't mistake what pill goes for what at what time in the day. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Like you said, dreadful. In the British great. accent is the best way you can possibly say it. <laughs> it's literally so unbelievable. I mean, it really does defy description. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's a, it, well, as, as we said off air, medicine is sick. It's, um, it, I, I listen, it, I, I want to tell you this. You'll laugh. Uh, uh, my wife's dad's strange sister died like six years ago, and she lived like out in the desert. In, oh. in California, and yeah. we had to go. We had to go through her house to like find stuff because she was one of those types. She was very old, and you know, she was depression, depression mindset, and she was hiding money, and uh -huh. you know, all sorts of stuff throughout the house. So we were like meticulously, mm -hmm. and I, I just remember for one day going through and finding all of her color coded plastic cabinets, 
the pills, the labels. I mean, I'm telling you, dude, it's probably a billion dollar industry for elderly people to buy all of their, you know, it's, I mean, it's insane. You remember the late, great uh, Robin Williams? The, yeah. The, oh, absolutely. Do you remember his skit on all this? He said, oh, when yeah. I was a young man, he said, uh, the doctors would say to me, Robbie, stay away from the drugs. They'll kill you. He said, now I'm an old man. He said, the, the same doctors are saying to me, Robbie, stay on the drugs. They're keeping you alive. It's unbelievable. So, you know, I, I, Jay, if I may, I'd just like to take a minute to tell folks about how big some of these human trials have been. Please, of course. Okay. The biggest one, let's go straight to the top, right? The biggest one was conducted in workers in Russia's oil and gas company, which is called Gazprom. And it was, and these guys, by the way, are working in Siberia, right? So they're not office workers in New York, right? They're, they're, they're already living in an extreme environment. Um, so anyway, what did they do with these people? How many were there? Well, there were just over 11,000 of them, okay? And they gave them uh, some hormones, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, some uh, peptide bioregulators. Specifically, they were the pineal, the thymus, and the blood vessel. And then they took another 3,000 guys, and they gave them um, uh, some vitamin pills, okay? So they, it was a double-blind placebo control trial right Eleven thousand in the in the in this trial and three thousand in the controls ever heard of those numbers anywhere else of course um, right within a year they they did they did one year measurements six year measurements 12 year measurements right can you imagine following up don't forget a lot of these people they were between 45 and 60 in the start of the trial and some of them were being followed up when they were 79, right? So imagine. Anyway, and bear in mind that that part of the world doesn't have the average life expectancy that we have, right? There are some countries in the West that don't do that good. Anyway, what did they find at the end of one year? I'm not going to the 12-year one. I'm going to the one-year one. They found that the people who took the, the bioregulators compared to the controls had one-third – of the morbidity and one third of the mortality. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. There's something fundamental going on there. So, you know, and, and also let's face it too, like normally, I mean, that's profound, but like normally when they're doing tests, they're not doing tests on people that are like my audience. They're not doing people that are living in an anti-aging. They're just, you know, again, you know, normal everyday people. True. That's right. So, so, this, so to show stuff. that kind of profound change in average people, imagine if you extrapolate that to people who are literally already living an anti-aging lifestyle. It, it would be a very, very interesting result. I mean, I mean that's right. right. These guys carried on drinking vodka. You know, right, they carried on right. doing what they did. They, they right. weren't asked to change their lifestyles right. or anything in any way. So we're living in an age right now. I tell people this all the time. I mean, just with fat loss right now, mm -hmm. with all these unbelievable peptides like terzapatide and semaglutide and these GLP-1 agonists and all these things that have come out in the last three years, you and I and people like us, and you and I have been in the space a long time and we've seen it all, but we are now in the golden age. And I, and it's only going to get better, right? I mean, we know that biotech is going to get better. Biomedical is going to get better. You know, there's yeah. all sorts of now energy and vibration and frequency technology and acoustic wave. But let's be honest. I mean, I, I was telling a, a guy, a, a good friend of mine yesterday, like what we can do right now with just pure fat loss, we couldn't even do three years ago. Wow. Yeah. So it's unbelievable what we have at our hands and the capabilities. And again, I know a lot of people are depressed mentally right now from what's happened in the last three years. And obviously a lot of people are also suffering financially, but you and I both know it's where you place your consciousness, right? Like if you place your consciousness in like, wow, I'm abundant, you know, I'm going to create a better reality, even though things might've been stressful and, and, and tough in the last three years, but I'm going to, I'm going to do more now. Mm. There's never been a better time. Yeah. The planet is screwed up and there is that guy, you know, Oh yeah. yeah. Kill Gates or something oh, like that. But I mean, Oh, Dr. Gates. Yeah. I've heard of it. So uh, <laughs> as a friend of mine said the other day, who's, who's a computer, a computer guy, he said, I don't want to boast or anything, but I've got exactly the same medical degree as Bill Gates. Anyway. So, uh, 
<laughs> exactly, dude. Uh, no, you're absolutely exactly. right. And, and consciousness is part of it. And also getting our priorities right, right? That's right. Because, you know, I always liken it to when you're traveling on a plane and they say, if the masks come down, put them on yourself first before helping others. And that to me tells us we have to look after our health. Why? Yes, because of ourselves, of course, but also because of our friends and our loved ones. How can we help them if right. we're in a bad place, right? We can't, can we? So no. getting our priorities right is, and I know what you're saying that, you know, financially the inflation's going crazy and you know, these bad things. But let's ask ourselves, do you really want another car? Do you really want another exactly. set? Do you, how about looking after your health first, right? It's got to be, isn't it? I mean, it's the only thing that matters. I mean, I, I tell people when I consult that, like, you know, when they complain about, you know, because, again, you still get the same people. They say, but my copay is $40, and that's what I can qualify for. I spend my whole life paying into my you know, HSA. Or, you know, and it's like, dude, if you can't spend, and this is, by the way, whether you make thirty grand or $5 million a year. If you cannot spend five to ten thousand dollars a year on your personal health, then it's because your priorities are out of whack. That's right. What's more important a, than your health, Phil? I have a big nothing problem. more important than we your have health. a bigger problem in Britain because, of course, we have the NHS and people say it's free. <laughs> Canada, it's free. And, yeah. Canada and the UK both have right? this. And I say, people, yeah, it's a shame we pay 40 percent tax, isn't it? But it's free, you know. And, and of course, they're going to get one. They're going to get. I don't know if you know this expression. It's an Irish expression. Hobson's choice. You ever That's heard right. that expression? No choice at all. None. Right? So you know. So it's not really free at all. But the people. No. So in the UK, only five percent of the health market is private. Unbelievable. It, you know. So there's a, the mentality is even worse. <laughs> and again, it's all because, like you said, the 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 um, the dole. The socialized aspect, the leeches of like, well, I deserve this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out and take personal account of me and, and become sovereign. This is what I deserve and this is what I get. But you're right. I mean, but that's where we are now in the world. Like people like you and I are not even, I dude, like, when are you even going to go to the doctor at this point? Unless you're gut shot and bleeding out. You and I know how to heal ourselves. <laughs> and why does it have to be a medical doctor? If it's not an absolute life threatening, why does it have to be a medical doctor? What about a nutritionist? Of what about course, a chiropractor, a functional medicine, an energy right healer. It's unbelievable, dude. I look, I tell people this. I mean, I just had, I interviewed a, a, a you know, a Harvard educated, uh, medically trained internist who then went to Yale and got their doctorate. And now is like, an influencer and makes money outside of the system. She, she was excommunicated and she literally told me right to my face. And this is a very highly trained allopathic doc. Mm. Every one of the internal diagnostic things that the diagnostic uh, tests that they give male and females. And as you know, these are all in actuary tables, 40 to 50 to 60 and up. They're all scams. Mm. They're all designed to find things that don't exist. And as you know, we've talked, we've already talked about consciousness and quantum physics that which is focused upon tends to manifest. If you tell a person that you just did a colonoscopy on that, oh, well, we found two gross, they're benign. But, and then you say to them, or, or they say to you, well, what do you recommend I do? And I mean, they're surgeons, Phil. What do you think yeah, they're going to recommend? And then they say, well, we, 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 we recommend that you have them surgically excised because they could become cancer. Phil, what do you think that person does? I know. We'll set you up on the appointment calendar in two months. We'll come in the next two months. That person goes to bed every night saying, Oh my God, I might have cancer. Oh my God, I might have cancer. And then they manifest it. Yeah, exactly. It's very, very true. I always liken everything to a car an analogy, you know, I just to simplify things. And I always say, if you went into the car shop because the car needed some work on it and you walked up to the guy with a hammer in his hand, what do you think <laughs> he's going to suggest? <laughs> you know? So <laughs> But I, I tell you another car analogy that I like. Okay, you got my permission to use this one, and that is: as we get older, we're like classic cars. That's right. right. Like classic cars, we are still capable of great performance. It's just that we need a bit more fettling. That's right. <laughs> but the last thing you need to do is go into somebody who's who's literally making money on the idea that they tell you you need to be constantly changed and tuned. I know. It's I know. unreal, dude. I'm telling you, 
uh, all the diagnostics. And then if you start reading like deeper down, like the thing, the tools that they use colonoscopies, they're the most unhygienic, savage, medieval, like, right. like they, they don't even clean them. They use them in like thousands of people. And then they got all this like horrifying bacteria that is, you know, from going in and out of people's colons. I mean, Phil, the whole thing is a scam. I'm just waiting for all of it to collapse. It's, they're just thrown at you as well, these things. I know people of in the course. UK, if you're over 55, they offer you a statue and they haven't even seen you. Dude, it's unbelievable. I, I've got I've to go back to Jonathan Wright again because I've, I've got so much respect for him. Again, on stage. One of the ladies stood up and she said, Dr. Wright, you've spoken about so many things today. Incredible. Really, you know, it's great detail, but it was complicated and it was a lot of things. So I'm a 55 year old woman. She said, what's the one thing I can do to benefit my health? And without missing a heartbeat, he said, don't see a doctor. Stay away from doctors. I mean, look, I mean, 100 percent that, you know, that was that great uh, expose slash um Summary, and I forget who it was. It was a uh, you know an NYU trained uh, internal medicine doctor, and I and, and I think is I think it was an essay called "Where Doctors Go to Die," okay. and it was written in like the mid mid two thousands. And it basically says that doctors, you know, who serve twenty five plus years of their life in hospitals or emergency crisis centers or urgent care centers, they see what goes on. And remember, and you know this, Phil, yeah. what is the second leading cause of death in the world? Doctors misdiagnosis. Doctors yeah, yeah. are practicing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they never, no. ever go to a hospital after the age of 65 because they know what really goes on there. And But yet people are so brainwashed and, and they it, listen I, to their doctors, bro. I know. And of course, the old adage is physician heal thyself. It's rather embarrassing that the average life expectancy for the average doc isn't as high as the average for the community. Of course. So, and yeah. another little story that you might like, I, I know we're going off at tangents here. That's okay. You probably, you know, the book Alice in Wonderland and um, <laughs> from the book, of course, the, she goes down the rabbit hole and blah, blah, blah. And from the book, there's the Mad Hatter, right? Yep. Mad Hatter. Well, that was true. Back in those days, the Hatters, the guys that made the hats, they did go senile early. It was a well-known fact. Why was that? Because in those days, when they were shaping a hat with steam, they had mercury in it. Okay. Yep. Now I don't I don't want to frighten anybody who's listening to this who might be in this profession, but the profession today that is at the highest risk of Alzheimer's disease are the because dentists. Yep. Because yeah, they're drilling out everyone's fill-ins albums, which nobody wants anymore, and yeah. they're getting them all. So yeah. well, you know, one of my good one of my good friends is uh Dr. Espen in uh not dr espen uh dr i can't really think his name he's the biggest guy biggest uh natural bioidentical dentist in the world now he's in germany and he removes all of those contaminations that people have had put oh, in their mouth i think i've met him yeah you know who he is is uh, his dom, name dom, 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 dom. Dom. yeah dom dom dom, dom. Have, he came yeah. to our conference last year yeah he's amazing yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. him and i are really good friends and i was just actually at the tony robbins biohacking thing with him in in uh, august of last year that we we knew each other but we had never met in person. You know, it's kind of like the whole internet thing, but he's an amazing guy. But uh, yeah, like his story that. is unreal, dude. I mean, yeah. he, he tells people biohacking starts in the mouth because they've contaminated us for, for decades. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to this. I know there are, you know, I, I think health is a pyramid, right? And the base of the pyramid where most of the material is, is the stuff we all must do regularly, right? Yes. Eat the right food, do exercise, get clean air, don't stress yourself out and that sort of thing. But as you go up the pyramid, you get into whether it's supporting your minerals and your, your vitamins and taking saunas or, you know, you can start to build this thing. And, yep. of course, eventually you get up nearer the top of the pyramid, what we're talking about, hormone replacement, using peptides, yep. stem cells, et cetera. Imagine – as you alluded to earlier, if you're doing the, imagine now, if you're doing those base correct and you add that on. 150 plus. Gonna happen? 150 yeah. plus. We're going to live a lot longer. There's no, there's no, I mean, I mean, and I manifest this by my affirmations and visualizing it. Um, there's no reason. Aging is literally a mind disease. Mm. If we constantly say I'm getting older and we, you know, regenerate because we're, as you know, we program ourselves. We're, we're, mm. we're master magicians. So if we program ourselves to be negative, 
you know, lacking abundance, sick. Oh, I'm old. I'm decrepit or whatever. That's what ends up happening. But if you, if you, if you do all these things that we're talking about, use bioregulators, peptides, hormonally optimized exercise, live insulin control, do all these things. There's no reason, Phil, that we can't live into our mid one hundreds. And that's what you find when they look at these centenarians and these super yes. centenarians. Oh, even though terrible things have happened to them in their lives, they've, they've gone through wars and goodness knows what. Yep. Always been optimistic. Exactly. Uh, upward. And of course, the famous story, I don't know whether it's true or not, I'd love it to be true, is um, John Clamore, who is, of course, holds the record of being the longest lived, verifiable person who yep. died at the age of 122 plus. I think on her 120th birthday, they had her with a huge cake with loads of candles in, you can imagine. And she's sitting there with a galange in one hand and a whiskey in the other. And the journalist, of course, comes along to take the photograph and everything. And they always ask that same question. They ask anybody of any age, what do you attribute your long life to? And apparently as she drank a whiskey and smoked her cigarette, she she looked over at him. She said, I don't really know, she said, but if I'd known I'd have lived this long, I'd have looked after myself. So it's a... <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. Phil, this has been such a profound podcast. Let me put this up here on the on, on the site real quick, and then I'm going to share. Um, so, so guys, uh, obviously, I'm going to have Phil back, and we're going to go deeper on the biological systems and probably organ systems so we can kind of go deep on a deeper dive. And, and this will be after these articles run so people can get even a more explanation. But this, this is going to uh, – this bioregulators is going to forward to their site and I will share a screen real quick here for one second. Um, so this is their site, right? It's profound health.com. And so when you click on that, Jay Campbell, uh, HTML, my tech team made that it will take you right here. And if you want to look at the bioregulators, you just go right down here, natural synthetic. But I mean, guys, as Phil was saying, there are so many amazing things. I just bought myself a ton of these things. Uh, I will be documenting my experience with all of these things. As you can see, there's six pages. But again, look at the prices. Most of these things are 50 bucks, you know, like longer cycles or maybe double that, maybe a little bit more than that. But I mean, it's unbelievable. If you're a Jay Campbell audience uh, member and you want to find out more information, I would just tell you literally go here and just click in and deep dive and start reading about them. And then obviously wait for, um, you know, what, is coming from me, which is going to be a series of articles. Phil has been gracious enough to uh, interview with my copywriter, Tom next week. Uh, and I promise you guys, we are going to cover this. Like nobody else has covered this. Like my, my goal is to make sure that these articles are on page one. Uh, maybe, maybe you can get uh, Dr. Kavinson to, to chime in. By the way, my copywriter speaks Russian, just so you know. Oh, very handy. Very handy. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to tell you that. So when you guys talk to him on Monday, because he is a Ruski, uh, he'll probably he'll probably say that to you. He'll he'll, he'll mention that. But I'll, I'm just cool. letting you know. But Phil, man, I so much so much appreciate. Let me just you get the final word. Well, uh, very brilliant, Jay, to be on your show. I'm very honored to be on your show, and uh, exciting that you get it because, as you say, not everybody gets it. And and I understand for the folks watching, it's a lot to take in. I've been there myself, and there is a lot to learn if you want to go down this rabbit hole. But believe you me, it will be one of the best rabbit holes you've ever been down. Yeah, awesome. Phil, I appreciate you, man. Um, so you guys, gals and girls, amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, always support the amazing people. You can Google Phil. He's got a million different websites. It's Phil Mikens. Obviously, his website, profound-health.com. Please support him. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.